Hi guys, it's Kimbo here, and today what I'm going to be bringing you guys is kind of like a sequel, I guess you could say, to a, uh, a video which I did quite a while ago now. I think it was back in September of 2015. I think it was, this was quite a long time ago. It's now 2016. And I felt like it'd be necessary to make kind of like a newer version or like a kind of a sequel, as I said, uh, to this video. And this video, which I did ages ago, was actually a uh, video detailing five tips for beginner players in Team Fortress 2. Now, since September of 2015, I've been playing Team Fortress 2 a lot. I have nearly like 200 hours on the game. And I thought it'd be appropriate to actually give you another five tips again for beginners or new players so that is what this video is going to be about today it's going to be another five tips for beginners or new players now it is inevitable that these tips aren't guaranteed to work for everyone it's just the fact that when i started off with tf2 these kind of tips and also the ones i did in the, the kind of the last video which i did back in september actually helped me kind of become better at the game so for me they helped and i assume that they are going to help other people but as i said it doesn't work exactly for everyone so you may need to kind of tune them a bit adjust them to your play style but generally if you follow these tips and just kind of put them into practice when you play team fortress 2 then hopefully within no time you're actually going to be pretty damn decent at the game and then when you actually are decent at the game you can start to enjoy it a lot more and kind of see what it has to offer Offer. Anyways, enough talking, let us get straight into the video. So the first point may seem a little kind of stupid, a little obvious, but you'll actually be surprised how many people overlook this. And it's the fact that you should not play the advanced game mode. So TF2 has a lot of game modes to offer. I think there's like 11 or 12 or something. There is a lot of them. Some of them, for example, like Payload or King of the Hill, are, you know, for all skills, basically. They're from beginners to advanced players. Both of them can play and both of them can and kind of do well however they do also have some game modes that are specifically aimed at advanced players and some people when they kind of see, like see this for the first time they're like oh my god that, that's amazing i'm gonna go in there it's gonna bowl in absolutely wreck everything even though they've played the game for about 10 minutes and they think they're gonna do really well they're super overconfident and <laughs> the thing is they go in there and it doesn't go too well so when you see one of these game modes just avoid it simple as just avoid it as much as possible for the most part just stick with for example, Payload, I play Payload so much, and it's a good game mode, and it has a mixed balance of people. You don't always get scrubs, you don't always get really, really sweaty people. It's a nice balance, and until you're actually kind of good at the game, or at least decent, or have somewhat of a grasp on the game, I would stay away from the advanced game modes. Of course, when you're feeling up to it, go for it. It might be a nice challenge. However, when you first start playing, just avoid it at all costs. It's just going to make you feel even worse than you already are. So my next tip is to try not to get too fancy. By this, I mean in Team Fortress 2, there's a lot of these kind of tricks, as you will, that players can pull off, mainly kind of experienced players, and some are a bit easier, for example, like rocket jumping, which is a very, very convenient skill that Soldier has, where he basically shoots a rocket at his feet, and you can fly some distances and, you know, get some air. I do it myself. It's actually, you know, pretty fun. And it is like one of those, you know, skills that you should eventually learn. Another one are trick stabs for spy, where you can jump behind people, you know, get around a corner, all this fancy stuff. And my advice for you is to not try and attempt them until you are at least decent at the game. The reason why I say not to do this is because if you go into a game, say for example you watched a video of like Mr. Paladin, all right, and he's doing all these fancy trick stabs, you're like, holy shit, that's so cool, I want to go in there, do some backstabs and jump off buildings and, you know, stab some people. And when you go in, you can't do it, kind of like me. You get frustrated because you're like, why can't I do it? He does it, why can't I do it? And then to be fair, it's just going to dampen your mood. It's going to get you a bit pissy. You're probably going to hate that class from now on. And it's going to make you feel bad when really you're not bad. It's actually just a, a much more advanced technique. I'd say that when you're starting out, I'd focus more on basic elements, just like knowing where health packs and ammo are instead of doing trick stabs. And when you are good at the game, you know, when you're getting decent, when you're actually, you know, going into a game and not getting completely shit on, then give it a go. Try and learn how to trick stab. But when you first start out, just stay away from it. Trust me. And the third tip for this video is to try to play with friends. Team Fortress 2 
obviously by the title, is a very team-based game. That's why all the classes are very important. They all factor in to one another. And to be fair, if you're playing on your own, it's not going to be as fun. Now, I'm not saying that you always have to play with friends. To be fair, the majority of the time, I don't play with friends. I do sometimes. But for the most part, I like to kind of, you know, play on my own, play a bit of soldier, try and be a, a tad more selfish than, you know, when I, I play with other people. Maybe even play a bit of medic now and then. But if you do have a friend that plays TF2 and they like it, then try and play with them. The main reason why this is good is you can do some very, very nice combos. Uh, like, for example, heavy and medic. If you play heavy and then your friend plays medic, and you can communicate with each other, you know when to deploy an uber, because say there's a nest, you're communicating with your, your mate going, yeah, deploy an uber, there's a fat nest around the corner, we'll destroy that. Whereas if you're playing with a random who's a medic, you're not going to know when to deploy, if you type in chat, it's going to take too long, you might accidentally say it to the, the whole of the lobby, not just your team, and then they're going to find out. So if you do have a friend to play with, it is a lot more enjoyable for a start, because you can talk, you can, you know, just chat as you would when you normally play games. And also you just have someone to communicate with about perhaps timing attacks right or just if you need some help calling in and and so forth. Team Fortress 2 definitely excels with friends and you don't even need friends to be fair. If your lobby is, you know, nice enough, you could just go in game chat and talk and just say, yeah, you know, say something and then they can come and help you and you can perhaps make some new friends but as i said if you do have some friends or a friend that plays tf2 they like tf2 or they're good at the game or what have you and they want to play with you then don't skip the opportunity the game is a lot better with friends and although as i said i do play it on my own quite a lot it is refreshing to have for example, three friends on your team, all different classes, all communicating. It's a lot more tactical, and to be fair, it is a lot more satisfying when you get a win. Just because you know you coordinated it all yourself, it makes you feel very proud. So the next point on this list is probably one of the most important points I can actually give you. So I will say that a video or, you know, someone never actually told me this. In fact, that I was just kind of, you know, playing games, and I just realised that this is necessary. Just experience has kind of taught me that this is something to always bear in mind. And that is to actually adapt your class to the game situation. So by this I mean don't play medic if your whole team is spies and snipers. Because snipers are always at the back of the map. They don't really push the objective. They kind of you know sit in the back defending trying to pick off people. If you're playing medic and you're healing them... That is completely pointless. You're healing someone that's effectively defending. I know you don't want to be a, you know, a, a pocket medic. You can go and heal them a little bit, but to be fair, if the majority of the team are snipers, then it'd be pretty pointless you playing medic. You might as well play soldier or heavy or something a lot more useful. On the contrary, if your whole team are heavies or soldiers, then play medic. Don't play sniper. Likewise, it applies for the other team as well. If the other team is full of pyros that are really paranoid, they're just spy checking everyone, then don't play spy. Simple as. If you're going to try and go in for the backstabs when the whole team are pyros, then it's just not going to work. You're going to get killed and then it's going to affect your whole morale of the game and so forth. Also, you have to bear in mind not to be like one of those guys that literally only play one class and get super stubborn about it. Like, they join a game like, oh, no, I want to play Scout. I'm the designated Scout, even though their whole team is full of heavies. You still get fucked, but you don't accept that you don't play Scout, so you just keep playing it, and you don't change. People vote to kick you off because you're being a dickhead and you're not helping. Just don't be that guy, simple as. This applies to a lot of stuff as well. It's like, if you're getting backstabbed a lot, then, you know, switch class perhaps. Don't play heavy if there's loads of spies on the other team. And just this kind of awareness of the game, it just, it helps a lot. It really does help a lot. This kind of situational awareness, it will take you a lot of places in TF2. There's only a certain amount of time I can, you know, tell you about good guns and good settings and stuff, but... As I think Mr. Paladin put it, you can't download skills. You can only download hacks. They are not skills, they are just cheats. And this kind of awareness, this is just something you do get with experience. And as you play, you'll eventually just adapt to it. If you see there's those heavies on the other team, you'll automatically think, oh, I might play spy, I might get some backstabs. If they're all scouts, you don't go, oh, I'm going to play spy and try and backstab some scouts at 20 feet in the air. Just don't do it. It's really not that hard to apply. And once you start doing it, you'll get used to it pretty quick. And trust me, it is one of the most important things you can learn and apply in your TF2 career. 
And the last tip for this video is a very simple one, but yet it is so effective and it is so well appreciated in the TF2 community. And that is to simply be a team player. As I've said countless times before, Team Fortress 2 Team is a very, very, very team-based game. Teamwork is necessary, and if you are being a team player, then you're probably going to make a lot of friends. The game is going to go a lot easier for you, and you're definitely going to kind of slip into the game a lot more, get used to it, maybe even make some new kind of, you know, friends to play with, and so forth. So by this, I mean, if you're playing Payload, for example, push the car, or if there's an NG nest, defend the NG nest, or defend key points, just try and help the team. Likewise, if you're playing Medic, heal everyone, don't just go around pocketing a heavy, you know, make sure to dish out the heals equally. And say, for example, if you're playing heavy, then try to defend, for example, a Medic that's getting under attack. Just try and help your team, because half the time it is actually going to make you win the game. I've rarely been in a game of TF2, for example, I don't know, Payload. I've never been in a Payload game of TF2 when we have won the game because like a scout on our team has gone off and absolutely you know killed everyone on the team it's never like that it's usually a nice balance between medic and heavy combos with spies going in and zapping the you know the sentries that are blocking off little bits which we need to get to and it is just necessary yet it's so simple but people just overlook it and it is so so important Trust me, if you go off and you're just super lone wolf, all you want is kills, you don't care about the objective, then first of all, you're not going to win, and second of all, it's not good experience, because not every game of TF2 is going to be like that, however, you can guarantee that most games are going to be very, very team-based. Likewise, if you see medics around, medics are going to heal you. They're used to healing. You have to give it back to them. Protect them. If you're playing heavy, give them a sandwich if they're, they're heal healing you, you know. Just be a team player. It's not much to ask, and it can just it can take you so many places. And honestly, I can't say much about it because it's just so useful. Just apply it, please, whenever you play a TF2 game. I thank you in advance. So those were another 5 tips for beginner players or new players in Team Fortress 2. As always, if you guys did enjoy this video, then please do feel free to leave a like on it. If you guys could also subscribe to this channel, that would be absolutely fantastic. And if you could also leave a comment, perhaps about some tips that you would give to beginner players in Team Fortress 2, then that would be absolutely fantastic. And as always, I will see you guys on my next video. This is Skimboot, signing out.